In this video, let's discuss the book of Obadiah. Now, the main idea that I think we see in the book of Obadiah is that the kingdom is the Lord's. This is how the book ends. So, the kingdom is the Lord's. The Lord is the king over all. He is sovereign. The kingdom is the Lord. So, those are the ideas that the book of Obadiah is focusing on. What we're seeing is that this text can be broken up into six sections. In verses 1 through 4, we learn about Edom's pride. So we learn that their pride, um, they're taking pride in where they live. They live in the mountains and they, they're finding security and safety here. Uh, they think that nobody can bring them down. There is, there is no enemy, no nation, no army who, who, can, who can bring them down. So what we're seeing in verses 1 through 4 is that the Lord is, uh, is uh, having a battle cry. He is sending out a messenger for uh, the nations to go to battle against Edom because of their pride. And then in verses 5 through 7, we see a different aspect of their pride. We see that they have no understanding. We're seeing that pride leads to to no understanding. What God tells them is that if thieves came or plunderers came, they would only steal enough for themselves. But uh, rather what's going to happen is that Edom is going to be completely destroyed. They don't have understanding. They don't realize that their allies are actually uh, their enemies, that those who are at peace with them are actually deceiving them. They, they have no understanding about their current situation. They feel safe, uh, high up in the mountains where nobody can get them, but really they're not safe at all. In verses 8 through 9, we learn that who's against them isn't merely their allies, but rather it's the Lord. The Lord is against Edom. So this isn't merely a, a, a battle a cry for the nations to go to war against Edom, although that is the case. But ultimately, it's the Lord who's against Edom. When you look in the book of Nahum, we see the same thing, that the Lord is against uh, Nineveh, which is a stark contrast to the fact that God says he is with his people. So we think of the term like Emmanuel, God is with us. So we're seeing that God is with his people to do good to them, but the enemies of God he is against them. He is set to doing harm to them. So we see that uh, Edom's pride has led to no understanding. Their allies are against them, but ultimately it's the Lord who's against them. Now in verses 10 through 14, we, we learn why. God is against them fundamentally because they have done violence against their brother Jacob. The nation of Edom is our descendants from Esau. Esau was the brother of Jacob. And when Jacob was being uh, defeated, likely in battle by Babylon, Edom did not come to protect them. Rather, they, they stood far away and they let uh, the Babylonians carry their wealth away. Foreigners entered their gates and cast lots for Jerusalem. And, and Edom did not help didn't help him at all. In fact, they, uh, they did even uh, worse against Jacob. Not only did they, they, uh, they, st not only did they stand on the wayside, they rejoiced in Judah's ruin and in the day of their distress. Now, it's important to know that for a long period of time, Judah ruled over Edom. And uh, even when Judah and Israel were one nation, they ruled over Edom. So this is an opportunity for Edom to rejoice in their, their uh, master's downfall. So instead of helping their brother, they rejoiced over uh, the downfall. Now verses 13 through 14 sound to me like um, their commands. Um, it's like when you discipline your kid and you give them commands after they've been naughty. That's what these verses seem to be saying. So... Do not enter the gate of my people in the day of their calamity. Do not gloat in the day of his calamity. Do not loot his wealth in the day of his calamity. Do not stand at the crossroads to cut off his fugitives. Do not hand over his survivors in the day of distress. It seems that Edom has done all of these things. So they've stood on the wayside. They So they stood aloof in Ju Judah's trouble. They rejoiced over the trouble, and they actually caused more problems. So... God is going to judge Edom because they were hostile to their brother 
Judah. Now in verses 15 through 18, we learn about the day of the Lord. And interestingly, the day of the Lord means two things for two different types of people. On the one hand, it means judgment for Edom. But on the other hand, it means salvation uh, for Jacob. So we see in these verses that Jacob will be restored, but Esau will be judged. So the day of the Lord has two different effects. For God's people, it means salvation, but for Edom, it means judgment. And then in 19 through 21, we're seeing the idea that the kingdom is the Lord's. And I think this is the main idea here. The kingdom is is God's. So amid God judging Judah because of their sin with Babylon, because that has just happened, amid Edom about to be judged by God, when kingdoms rise and kingdoms fall, Everybody needs to know that the kingdom is the Lord's. So here are a few discussion questions for us to think about as we discuss uh, the book of Obadiah. First, let's discuss the nature of Edom's pride. And we see that predominantly in verses 1 through 4, but we see it everywhere. Really, it's their pride that's leading to no understanding, and it's leading their it, it's their pride that's leading them to treat their brother in, uh, in terrible ways. It's their pride that's leading them to be deceived. So what is the nature of Edom's pride? Um, let's discuss that uh, together. And have we seen any modern examples or maybe even personal examples of pride affecting us, our people in our lives in similar ways? Second, we need to realize that the book of Obadiah is uh, a book, uh, is Israel's book. Uh, it's not Edom's book. It's We're not even certain if Edom ever heard this prophecy. So this is a prophecy against Edom that was written for Israel, which is very interesting. So a good question that we need to think about is why did Israel need to hear this? Now, remember, God's people have just been destroyed, most likely, and Edom uh, didn't care for them at all. And Obadiah gives them this vision. Why do they need to hear this? And part of the answer, I think, is found in verse 21. So they needed to be reminded about this truth. So let's discuss that in our groups. Why did Israel need to hear this message? Third, why would the Lord's people, who are Judah, experience a different fate on this future day of the Lord? So on the one hand, we have uh, the Edomites being burnt like stubble. But then on the other hand, we have saviors going up to Mount Zion and ruling over Edom because the kingdom is the Lord. So on the one hand, we have Esau being destroyed and God's people flourishing. Why did they experience different fates? Let's be reminded that it was, Judah wasn't more righteous necessarily than Edom. We constantly read in the prophets in particular that Judah... They accepted bribes, their judges, they perverted justice, they shed innocent blood, they didn't treat one another in truly human ways. So in many ways, God's people are just as awful as Edom. So why then do they experience a different fate on the day of the Lord? Let's think about the gospel. And uh, fourth... Uh, God's people needed to know that the kingdom belongs to the Lord. So they're going out into exile right now. The Babylonians just conquered them, and they needed to be reminded that the kingdom is the Lord's. Why? And how does this truth encourage us? Or why do we need to be reminded of that truth today? And finally, we should remember that the hatred between Jacob and Edom isn't just on a national level, but was on a personal level. We could think back to the book of Genesis and we see their hatred for one another that was fueled because of Jacob's sin, Esau's sin, but also the parents' sin. If you remember, Rebecca and Isaac had favorites and it fueled this hatred for, uh, it fueled Jacob's uh, sin and it fueled Esau's hatred of Jacob. So how does this reality that the sin of Rebecca and Isaac and Jacob and Esau had lasting consequences for centuries and ultimately led to the utter destruction of Edom? How should that reality challenge us as parents, as siblings, 
and as those who have influence over others. Church family, I hope you enjoyed discussing the book of Obadiah together.